How's it going, fish fam? Those of y'all new to my channel, my name's Austin, and this is Fantastic Freaks, and this behind me is a brackish water aquarium, which can only mean that yes, today we are doing part two of uh, how to set up a brackish water aquarium. Today, more focusing on uh, the acclimation process of our fish, or namely our green spotted puffers. For like the last year, or more so a year and a half probably, these five green spotted puffers have called this 20 gallon long home, and they were much smaller when I initially got them. And now you can see while they're not overly big now, it is starting to get just a little crammed in here. So it is high time we get them in their new home. And today guys, we're gonna work on doing exactly that. Of course, these little spotted beauties are in true fresh water, and we're also trying to acclimate them not just to a bigger tank, but totally different water parameters in general. We can't just drop them out of this freshwater tank here and over to our brackish water tank here. I mean, I guess you could, but it's probably not gonna go very well. Thus bringing the question, how do we get our little puppers from down there in that freshwater tank <gasps> over to there in their brackish water tank? We're looking a little more in depth than that. We're gonna talk about what's going to acclimate the puffers itself. This airline hose, you'll notice that I have a little bit of it here in the water. I have it about eh, a fifth of the way down in the tank or 20% for some. You can go a little bit lower if you want to be safe there. The main thing to make sure this works is a big part is we gotta make sure that stays submerged underwater. Otherwise, this is just not gonna work. Our siphon is not gonna work as it should. I have the lid holding it in place here. I will say if you also wanna make this a little easier, you can use little corner pieces. Um, I only had little pieces that had corner check valves. Um, the corner check valves don't allow you to get the same siphon pressure as you would if they were just plain old, you know, elbow corners. Or, or you know, just doing what we're doing now. Just having the straight, direct airline hose going down with our check valve right on top of the bucket here. And yeah, that's our... That's all it is for the system here. We're just using an airline tube, somewhere about, I'd say, a foot or so from one of the ends, or 18 inches if you want to be safe. And yeah, snip it and reconnect the whole uh, line with uh, a T-joint check valve. Of course, before we start the acclimation process, we want to make sure that our line here works as it should here. So before we do all the... Uh, more stressful work, we'll call it. We're gonna go ahead and put our siphon to the test and make sure it works as it should. When we first start, I'm gonna have the check valve wide open because I wanna make absolutely sure that this thing is indeed gonna siphon the water from the tank to our bucket here. And look at that, guys. We're getting water. Now that we know that the water is gonna get in our bucket here just fine, yeah. It is now time to begin the transition process of moving our fish over. And as exciting as this part is to finally start moving these guys over, this is also the part, guys, where it's a bit, well, it's the most nerve-wracking part. Because in the end, it's still transitioning these guys from a full fresh water environment to water with salinity. And that's, I can't initiate just how big that is. I mean, the bacteria in fresh water versus water with salt at all is very different hence why we want to make this acclimation process as smooth as possible but of course we can't put these little beauties in just an empty bucket so we are still going to put some fresh water in here for them to swim around in while the salt water drips in guys i had this bucket about a third of the way full on water so uh we want to make sure we don't fill this up too high because we still want to make sure that there gets to be enough of a concentration of specific gravity or salt in the water so that when we do officially try to move them over into the tank here, they're going to be as used to that salinity as possible. Now I will say when acclimating fish to brackish water, you don't always have to do this next step, but since we're dealing with puffers, I'm going to scoop them up with a cup here and pour them into the bucket here. Reason being why I will always do this with puffers when moving them from one tank to another or just have to move them from the tank, period, is if they inflate themselves and with air, they can get little air pockets trapped with in their body, which can be fatal to them. And obviously we don't want that. Nope. <laughs> 
They may not be as fast as Tetras, Rainbows, or some Barbs out there, but let me tell you, those little guys can still be a pain to catch. <laughs> but there they all now, all one, two, three, four, five of them in there. So we are ready to begin the acclimation process. I'm gonna go ahead and gently give them their barrels back. Um, this isn't mandatory, but this is something that I like to do with my fish. I like to give them something that they're, they are still familiar with. And this was something that they love to swim through, even when I turn the lights off, that they chill out in for the night. So it's a little comfort piece, I think, for them, just so it's not, you know, a big orange bucket for them. So some of you might be wondering exactly what I did to create the little hole for our airline tube to go in to uh, siphon in the brackish water to our puffers here. What you can do is just take a little Phillips screwdriver, a durable Phillips screwdriver, and somewhere on the lid, just somewhere just that wasn't the cleanest shot in the world, but yeah, there you go. Puncture yourself a hole, and then boom, you got a little airline hole. This one, of course, feeding in the airline hose that is siphoning in the brackish water, and this one over here is going to be the one where we put an airline hose in to make sure these guys still have plenty of air as we do this process as again this process if you can make this a slower process which is highly recommended it's better the more gradual you introduce them to the salt water the more likelihood of this being a great success and stressing out your fish as least as possible all right we got a little pump this ap30 from aquatop will be plenty good enough here's our hose and just so it's not loud bubbles in there for them, I am going to go ahead and put an air stone on this bad boy. Oh yeah, we got bubbles. We're ready to rock. This is kind of the nastiest part of this whole thing, guys. Um, how exactly do you start siphon? Well, you can suck on it like a straw like you do some siphons, uh -huh. which honestly is the way that I do it. I know some people think that's absolutely appalling, but it works. <laughs> and there we go, guys. We are dripping. We, and I will say that you do not want a little water stream. You want a drip. A water stream is trying to acclimate them way too fast. To stress them out, and honestly, they could die of the stress on how quick it is there where they have to try to acclimate. So again, do not give a full water stream. You want a drip somewhere around this pace. But yeah, we're gonna let this thing now do its business. Um, I'm gonna check on it again here in about a half hour, just to make sure we don't have any fish flopped over on their backs, and then if they're all uh, doing okay in that regard, I'm probably just gonna let this go ahead and sit for an uh, hour and a half, two hours or so, because uh, it's gonna take a while for this bucket to get all the way to the top. I can tell you now, it's still only about a third full, so uh, yeah, we'll come back on check on these guys here soon, and soon and very soon, they're gonna be enjoying this new 75 gallon tank. I'm sure those little guys are not liking life too much right now, but I promise little dudes, it's about to get better. Many unbearable hours later. Well, there is definitely uh, less water in this tank now, that is for sure. That is because, well, now it is about uh, a quarter after midnight. Hey, as I record this here, guys, um, when I initially started recording this, it was about a little bit before 2.30 in the afternoon when I began the acclimation process. And I mean, I told you earlier, guys, um, it does not hurt to take your time with this. So, I mean, this has been about a uh, 10 hour process, roughly. Uh -huh. So after testing the water and such, we are finally, and I do stress finally, about ready to uh, move the puffers out of that bucket there and up into their new tank. And I'm sure no one is more excited for that to happen than those guys right down there. But the fact that they're still swimming around here and uh, are as active as they were when we began is a very good sign here. And uh, we're not totally out of the woods here yet, but now comes the part where we put them in the tank here and we just monitor them a while, make sure that all goes well. And really this just comes down to if your tank is properly cycled. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so it's been about 15, 20-ish minutes since I moved them in here couple of them already starting to try to get acclimated and uh, explore the new tank here. None of them have really checked out the ship yet here, but you also notice that I moved the barrels from 
their old aquarium into their new home here. And you'll notice that two of them, or actually three of them, are hanging out more towards the barrels here. They're starting to slowly get more and more curious, but you'll notice they're kind of staying close to the barrels. I like to do this too. Um, I may keep these in here for the long haul. I may not. But I also, for right now, want to keep them in here because uh, for the fish, it's a piece that they can recognize and recognize kind of as a safety piece because when they were back in the 20 gallon long, they like to swim through this. And when they relax, this is the pieces that they like to relax in. So it's just a piece that gives them some familiarity, thus hopefully some comfort as they try to get used to their new home here. I mean, look at this guy here already. Look at his green already just popping right off. I think as these guys get more and more used to their home, guys, we're going to see more of our puffers looking like uh, that guy back there. I think these guys' colors are going to slowly start getting more and more vibrant. I mean, obviously, they're still a little stressed out here yet, so their colors are still a little off. That's part of it. But I think especially now that they're in the brackish, their colors are going to get better and better. And also, since they have way more space, we're probably going to see a little bit of a growth spurt too. So overall, happy to finally have this project uh, done. Happy to have these guys in their new tank. And I think uh, everybody involved here is going to have a much happier life here. But that, guys, will do it for what we'll call part two of the brackish water tank uh, mini series, whatever we want to call it here. Um, at long last, guys, I mean, one of the projects checked off the list here. The green spotted puffers are finally in their new home. Like I said, after a little bit of time has passed and they get more and more familiar with that aquarium, we'll definitely come back and revisit these guys, give a little update. Um, I guess I haven't really given a whole care guide on green spotted puffers too, so if you would like to see one of those, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video overall, or really this little series overall, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here on the channel, and I'm not done so already, consider clicking the subscribe button. Like I say, we'll have an update coming up on uh, these guys here, maybe early December, maybe mid-December, somewhere around that time frame. We'll come back and visit these guys, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll give a little care guide while we're at it. But as always, guys, thank you for watching this video, and for all the continued support you give. It's greatly appreciated by every single one of y'all. I will see you all in my next video, Fish Fam. As always, stay fantastic.